Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the troll Right, hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast episode 56 for Sunday the 24th of July 2011. It's myself, Tim, and Roy is here. And we've also got a special guest today, uh, Michael Glasser. Michael's the chap I've been speaking to for quite a bit online in various uh, forums and uh, I'll give you a quick resume now. Um, Michael Glass has been working in the technology industry since the late 1980s. He's been educating users of all levels from kindergarten students to senior citizens. He's been working in the corporate world as a technology trainer and he currently owns his own small business which is uh, Prescott Computer Guy. There'll be a link at the end on the, on the show notes. He also teaches classes in various online institutions. Michael, I hope that's done you justice. If you just say hello to everybody, so you'll get an idea of your voice before we continue on. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Marvellous. Um, well, today's show is going to be a bit different because um, we did not in- originally intend to just do a straight interview of, of Michael. And uh, after having a discussion at the beginning of the show, we decided that uh, Michael's going to be part of the entire show and talk about a few of the topics in the news and put his 10 pence worth in with uh, different views that Roy and myself have. So uh, without further ado, we'll pass straight over to Roy and he can kick us off with the first topic of the day. Roy, it's all yours. The first, uh, <clears throat> the first thing I found was that the uh, the ARM processor are making ways into the laptops now, and it's been set up in within about a week or nine days in the case of the articles. That's a few days old. Uh, there will be a notebook uh, running Android, which of course is based on Linux, uh, and that's going to challenge to an extent, I believe, the uh, desktop situation. Uh, as far as Microsoft is concerned, and that's uh, that's the first item of news I have today. Uh, and the other thing I found, and I, I think we'll get some challenge for this thing, is that uh, Apple is copying uh, Linux to an extent, as, as far as certain operating systems that are based on Linux are concerned. Uh, the the news says basically that Apple is trying to copy some of the features in uh, uh, in Chrome OS uh, from Google, uh, which is an interesting contention. Um, and there are all sorts of other news we, we probably won't get to in a moment, so I want to I think it. I think that's a very good starting point, because uh, one of the comments made was, um, I, I, did I hear you correctly, Roy, when you said um, Apple, uh, you mentioned Apple co- was copying Linux? Yes, yeah. basically they have a new operating system called Lion, uh, which is one of the OS X uh, uh, series of operating systems. Since I, I, I personally used uh, OS 9 back in the days for a period of time at work. Um, I haven't used 10 so much. I used it on occasions, uh, just trying to, to see what it's about. Uh, and I, we, I had some arguments with Michael, basically, before, about the capabilities of the of Mac OS X compared to what you can achieve in Linux if you actually know what you're trying to find. I find a lot of people, they judge Linux by what's possible, at least on the surface, in something like Ubuntu, which essentially is the GNOME desktop on top of uh, GNU and Linux. Uh, so this is, a, I believe, one of the things we'll talk about later as we go into Ooh. the show. I suggest we uh, have a discussion now. I'll pass it straight over to Michael. Michael? Well, I'll, I'll throw my, I don't know specifically what, what Apple is being said to copy from Chrome OS, other than maybe when you reboot in Lion, which, by the way, I'm using Lion right now. I'm a Mac user. I use Linux. I use Windows. I use, I use Mac. I'm on Lion right now, and... I do know, I haven't even tested this, but when you reboot on a Mac and you go into their sort of um, diagnostic mode, you can go into just a browser mode and have just the browser. Mostly, yeah. at least the argument is that so that you can go online and do research as to what's wrong with your computer. Some people have said you could also use it as a kiosk to um, to be sort of like Chrome OS. Is is that even what, what you're talking about? To be honest, Roy, I'm, I don't know. Well, various things here have been mentioned. Uh, the source for the uh, for the article is OStatic. Uh, a person called Sam Dean, who is actually a Mac user, uh, who writes about open source and isn't exactly a big fan of Linux. And in this case, he claims, uh, and I could give you a list of examples he gives of things that are being copied from 
uh, Chrome OS, especially the uh, cloud elements of the operating system, being cocked over by Apple in some to some degree, I suppose. Uh, and actually, I have the perspective that generally, historically speaking, uh, Apple was taking quite a bit from the open source community, including code. In some cases, uh, KHTML from KDE to create the uh, to create first WebKit and then creating a browser on top of that, Safari. Um, so it's it's quite an interesting situation where uh, we basically try to contend and to show that many of the origins of what today we know as OS X is not just based on Unix, but it's actually based extensively on open source and free technologies, which were made proprietary to a large degree. Um, that's uh, that, that to me is an important issue, especially for those who claim that Apple is so far ahead of the competition. Well, I mean, things like WebKit, that's open source. That's that's what Chrome yeah. uses. They, they have to keep it open source in this case because it was uh, LGPL, right. the original code. I believe they weren't even compliant at first. It, they, I think they were pressured to some degree by the KDE community to do that. Uh, but I don't know the exact history and the correspondence about that. Uh, but where possible, Apple, Apple does contribute a few things back, but usually when it's, when it's not really for, um, for, 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 for being fair, it's just that it has to, or in some cases it's just beneficial to it to get some contributions back from, uh, BSD developers and such stuff. So, um, this, this is one of the issues I personally have, have, have with Apple. I believe the perspective from this, uh, uh, at least for this audio cast, will be to some degree Linux you know, compared to Apple or OS X, uh, as opposed to what we sometimes do, which is to compare Windows to Linux. And I, I believe on the technical merits, it's it's really the case now that Linux is just as good as Windows, if not better. Uh, but lots of people tend to write articles about the race between uh, uh, those challengers to Windows, who's going to take more market share more quickly. Um, and at some stage, you told me something about uh, Ubuntu not moving fast enough, not implementing things fast enough, under the assumption, of course, that Ubuntu is the only representation of, <clears throat> of Linux as a, as a platform, uh, which I then argued isn't the case. But well, no, The reason I tend to, to focus on any one distri distro, whether it's that one or today I happen to have Mint running also, I have a virtual machine with Mint running, mm -hmm. is when I talk about desktop Linux, people say, well, desktop Linux is a huge thing, and it is. Yeah. So you need to talk about one distro, and then say, I pick a distro, and I usually pick one of the more popular ones, whether it be, yeah, you know, Ubuntu used to be the big one, and Mint seems mm -hmm. to be coming up, so I'm running Mint now, yeah. and that's my comparison basis yeah, I think so, we, uh, we the people who tell me that I need to pick one. I mean, and the number one distro based on the uh, well, based on distro watch, which isn't, isn't a very good measure, but the number one distro in distro watch for the past seven days is actually PC Linux OS, which is based on KDE, and that's the one my dad's basically using. Uh, a very easy one and very powerful because it's using, uh, in my opinion, KDE. I know, I know the team doesn't agree with me on KDE, it doesn't quite like that. But I think when it comes to certain advanced functionality, it's sometimes easier to achieve that with KDE, which can be some somewhat, or used to be somewhat confusing to some people. Uh, but it, it, it can actually achieve a lot of things and make it very simple. Now, I don't, I don't use KDE that much, but from what I have seen, They've come a long, long way. Now, I think they're going through some growing pains, and that's fine. I mean, that's that's part of any big change in your paradigm, and they've gone through that. And I think they, they used to have it where they would have everything to everybody in your face all the time, all these little buttons, and, and for a power user, maybe that's useful, but, but you know, for the stereotypical your mom or your dad, it just was too much. And they, they learned that lesson, and they've now streamlined it and and done more of their own thing to make it easier, which is, I mean, that's what I've been advocating for for years, to say, let's make this where it's easier, where, where yeah, the stereotypical your mom can use it and and not have to go through as, as huge of a learning curve. Have you had a chance to use KD3 before? I have. I mean, again, I've, mostly, I've mostly used GNOME. But I have used KDE. What, what did you find very confusing about it? Well, in the past, and I've had I've had screenshots and even some videos online. I don't know if you've seen some of those, mm -hmm. where there's just a 
there was the whole row of buttons on the left hand side, at least by default on PC. PC and Linux had that, and I, I'm sure you could turn that off, and other distros could have been different. But on PC Linux, there was 